Welcome to tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Melissa Melton, and here's what we have in store for you tonight, this Friday, November 16th, 2012 edition. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. As secession gains momentum, local residents offer their thought on this political phenomenon. Then, the TSA opt-out and film campaign is days away and gaining national attention. Intentions are high as Israel and Hamas continue their deadly theater. All that in the GMO Roundtable, coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. As many of you who tuned into yesterday's radio show heard, Alex has now called for a second American revolution, a peaceful revolution led by states who would secede from the federal government to reconstitute our republic under the terms of our Declaration of Independence, our Bill of Rights, and the Constitution. The White House has now received petitions from all 50 states, totaling a million signatures. And Alex has said, we are not calling for secession to form new separate countries. We are calling for secession because the states created the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and federal government, and the federal government itself has been hijacked by foreign special interests. I am calling for people to be educated about how we can secede to restore our republic. And he also went ahead to warn about how the mainstream media would try to downplay this and characterize it in a negative light, which we've already seen happen, as in our next story by Steve Watson, secession proponents do not want a civil war and no, they cannot be stripped of their firearms. And he goes through to mention that Diane Roberts of the London Guardian said that those who want secession just want to reenact the Civil War, that they are white supremacists or fundamentalist zealots and sore losers, and that the idea of secession has zero legal status and the Tenth Amendment is basically null and void. Glenn Beck also jumped on that bandwagon, calling anyone who signs a petition dumb and just trying to advocate a violent uprising. And even GOP governors are now distancing themselves from the secession movement. We have a spokeswoman for Rick Perry saying that he believes in the greatness of the union and that nothing should be done to change it. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal called the petition silly. Uh, let's see, Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam said he doesn't think it's a valid option. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley said that while he recognizes there's frustration with our federal government, he believes that states can be great laboratories of change. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to happen. I guess we're supposed to hope for change, hope and change, because obviously nothing has changed in the way we've been currently doing things. And finally, Republican Governor of South Carolina. And finally, South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley said, I love this country. I'm going to fight for this country. And I think there's a distinction there because she didn't say, I love these people, I'm going to fight for the people in my state. She specifically said, I'm going to fight for this country to keep it in. Now, constitutionally speaking, secession is an option for a government that has overreached. And I think Joel Wolverton of The New American sums it up really well when he says, a growing number of concerned citizens of this republic are no longer willing to recur to Congress to repeal unconstitutional laws or to file legal complaints in the hope the courts will strike down offensive measures. They understand that while perhaps commendable, these tactics are futile and offer no guarantee of the restoration of constitutionally assured freedom. They refuse to wait on this or that president, this or that congressman, this or that political party to acknowledge our pleas from federal oppression. Now, last night, David Ortiz went out on the streets to ask American citizens what they thought of the secession movement. Here's his report. Patriots mobilizing or Republicans acting like sore losers? That's the question many are asking themselves today as reports continue to come in that show over 600,000 Americans representing every U.S. state have signed petitions requesting that their state secede from the union. Despite the fact that several governors have voiced their disapproval of the idea, the petitions are a definite reminder that the country remains politically divided. Now, what do you imagine when you hear the word secession? I mostly think of the Rick Perry phenomenon of a couple of years ago where he suggested secession and uh, and actually now I, I hear he's he's uh, he's kind of he's kind of saying about this this movement that it's uh, that it's that although he disagrees with the federal government that it, it's not viable, even though a couple of years ago he was he suggested it himself. Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure 
what that means? Um, uh, I mean, it's obviously heavily reminiscent of Civil War era, which is, you know, doesn't really remind you of good things. Um, it's going to be even worse when we move from the United States, because then we're going to be held, held account for our own Border Patrol and all that. Okay. Andrew is going to get bad. Oh, they gonna, he's going to get bad for society in Texas, period. Going to be a bunch of crime. The White House is expected to comment on this issue in the near future since several signature thresholds have been met. Congressman Ron Paul calls the idea of secession an American ideal. Uh, do you think calls to secede from the Union are un-American? Um, I mean, I think that the American way is, you know, essentially to... America was founded on people kind of like, you know, being discontent with a certain type of government and then making their own. So I think that that would essentially be American. Uh, no, they're definitely not un-American. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't think that it's necessarily the best thing for, you know, Americans or the Americans in the states that want us to secede, but it's not un-American. I mean, it's, like I said, it's in the Declaration of Independence, so. Well, yeah, good. Because <laughs> they're trying to, they're, they're trying to secede from the states, right? So, I mean. It's not an American no. thing to not want to be an American anymore. Yeah. Just everything about America is all like, we're in this together. You know, we've advanced this far together sort of thing. But now it's like, if you try and leave, then it's like, I think I can make it on my own or whatever. And it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to work out. Is our country run by Congress or by global bankers? I don't know. There's a lot of seen and unseen things covered in the media, so I, I can't really answer that for sure. I would say primarily by, uh, it's primarily run by, you know, global financial interests and, uh, you know, just capital interests, generally speaking, like uh, multinational corporations. And, you know, the banking and financial institutions, pretty dominantly for sure, like a lot of like, you know, the IMF and things like that. Um, our country as well as many other countries, their policies are dictated by you know, IMF and Federal Reserve policy and stuff. Yeah, more than probably the Congress. We can acknowledge that it's not just Congress men's minds at work here, but I think that there's still something to be said for what they're doing. Reporting for InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Ortiz. Now I would just like to point out that this country has been taken over. It's been taken over by foreign megabanks. It's been taken over by globalists. And to secede from this nation is not to s destroy it, it's to restore it. It's our only option to restore it. And in my opinion, the reason the White House hasn't come forward to address this issue is because the corrupt entities behind the White House do not want to acknowledge the fact that we have this ability, that we have the right to secede, to take back our country, and to restore our republic. And we can do this. We can take our country back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not just a saying around here. The answer to 1984, the answer to the NDAA saying they can whisk us away without due process, the answer to 30,000 drones in our skies, the answer to the TSA reaching down our pants and telling us we have to be slaves to this government, the answer to 1984, ladies and gentlemen, very much is 1776. And we have a right to do this and we have a right to take our country back. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. The InfoWars shop is the largest distributor of ProPure water filter systems. And now, get 15% off your ProPure order with the promo code WATER15. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations, the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations, third edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. 
When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com and don't forget the promo code WATER15 